Commissioner, where were you in 1992 at the time of the first Rio conference on sustainable development? 1992, 34 years old. I was uh, director of the Institute of Macroeconomic Analysis and Development in Ljubljana, which is a, actually a macroeconomic institute which is taking care for economic, social and environmental part of the development. Uh, so, good basis. Over the past 20 years, how has industry responded to the challenge of sustainable development and how have these efforts been communicated to you? I think it would be fair to say that the picture is mixed. We have some very good examples uh, on which we could all learn, uh, examples which showed that there is a clear leadership and understanding of the future. And on the other hand, we have also quite a lot of still lock-ins, I would say, of uh, uh, wrong decisions in the past. If there is anything what one could underline is uh, the fact that uh, uh, level of knowledge today and awareness of the problem which we are dealing with is much higher than it was in 1992. In Rio, uh, we will talk about green growth. So talking about growth, it's simply impossible without the industrial uh, business sector. And uh, I think it will be important to hear there the role of the business sector of the ones who understand which are the global megatrends, the ones who understand uh, which are the things which we would need to change in our production and consumption patterns. In January this year, the UN published the first zero draft text. To what extent does this draft reflect the EU's priorities? Zero draft, uh, it's a good basis uh, for uh, negotiations. Uh, it involves quite many of European priorities. Uh, green growth is uh, very much underlined as a future concept. Also, when it's talking about the governance, uh, upgrading UNEP uh, to an agency, UN agency, it's uh, one of the options which is listed. So we are pretty happy to start negotiations on that basis. But on the other hand, we also see some weaknesses of the proposal. We believe that it's not concrete enough. Uh, we think that it's uh, a bit too much underlining uh, the negative uh, sides and uh, probable barriers which are connected to the green growth instead of showing more as an opportunity. And uh, uh, we think that uh, when it comes to the means of implementation, uh, it is a bit too much focused only on ODA. It should uh, really take a bit broader approach, uh, taking all the necessary means which we need to join, of course, including ODA, to get uh, the real uh, necessary response to help the developing countries. Excellent. What is your assessment of the negotiations so far? In your opinion, for example, will the economic crisis be an impediment? Uh, to progress or will it be a driver on the green economy, the global green, green economy? Yeah, honestly, negotiations are still in an early stage. Uh, so uh, I think uh, one would need to wait a bit more to have a more uh, a serious judgment about where we stand. Uh, but uh, there is one thing which I would like to underline. Of course, we are all meeting in, in Rio because we have high ambitions and because we would like to change the world mm -hmm. into a more sustainable direction. So uh, issues which are there on the agenda, which are connected with uh, institutional questions and financial questions, are by all means important, but they should not overshadow uh, the rest of the substance on which we should decide. So uh, I think we should be uh, careful about that, uh, that we take everything in a kind of uh, connected uh, uh, connected strategic way. Uh, all these institutional issues in a way for us would need to be looked through an angle of how they actually match to the things which we would agree from the uh, substantial side. Uh, concerning the crisis, uh, I would just say, yeah, one could really say that if both reactions are possible. And it's not easy to talk about environment and sustainability nowadays because the crisis, economic crisis is all across the globe and especially in Europe we see it uh, quite firmly rooted. Uh, but I think uh, one thing which would be necessary to understand is that when we talk about green growth, we do not talk about stopping the growth. We talk about a uh, different way how we would grow in the future, quality of growth, which is important, taking into account the limits of the planet, which are becoming more and more obvious. And I think uh, that crisis is basically, uh, for me, uh, the major opportunity, because in crisis times you have to make some quick 
decisions, but these decisions which are addressing more short-term measures would need to be designed in a way that they are at the same time addressing also the sustainability questions which are more mid- and long-term. And what do you think are the best tools at our disposal for fostering a sustainable future? Uh, I think what is utmost needed in the first place is a political leadership. It's understanding of the life in which we are, it's understanding, vision, how to come out. Uh, because uh, uh, there is no magic uh, silver bullet uh, to, to the answer. I think you have to combine all possible measures which you have uh, in your disposal. So starting uh, from the regulation, legislation, if you wish, but definitely using also the market incentives uh, uh, like prices, like taxes, uh, then adding to that uh, absolutely also the incentives from uh, research and development, innovation area. And uh, certainly it will be a lot about partnerships, partnerships between governments, business, civil society, but also partnerships between different parts of the world which are all sharing the same, uh, the same uh, future. Uh, I think uh, uh, it will be uh, important also to understand that uh, some of the things which we are as a European Union putting on the table, like uh, questions about uh, concrete uh, uh, targets, concrete actions, for the future, concrete milestones, that they are seen e exactly in that context. We would like to create a predictable environment in which, through which we would show that we understand through the political leadership where we stand and where we would need to go, and on the other hand also create this predictable environment for the business sector to orientate in the future. Now you're going to be the head of the EU delegation to the conference, so what contribution would you like to see from industry? and indeed other stakeholders to make the Rio Plus 20 conference a success? Yeah, industry is absolutely a crucial partner. As I said uh, at the beginning, uh, you cannot talk about growth, uh, not taking industrial views into account. And also uh, one thing which I would definitely like to see it's the leadership coming from the industrial partners. Uh, uh, many of them are really well understanding the global megatrends. Many of them are very well understanding that the future uh, we are talking about, it's inevitable. And that these decisions uh, will uh, need to be done. Either we do it now and we prepare ourselves for those changes of the, our production and consumption patterns uh, in a more sustainable way, or we will be later on forced uh, and we will hit some of the walls which uh, will be unpleasant. If I would give any message to the industry, it's uh, uh, I know that they are understanding that reality. Be vocal, show the leadership, and uh, uh, be an active part of the development uh, in which we are all engaged in, uh, in, uh, in Rio. So industry is a vital partner and they should be a vital part of the solution. Very clear. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you very much.